Hey traders, Rocky here, and let's talk about some of the shifts that we make in terms of a conversation that we had yesterday on the daily time frames influence on my day trading. What were the three main markets I'm looking at? S&P, NASDAQ, Dow. What was the directional bias? S&P and NASDAQ bullish, and Dow was actually still bearish. So this goes back to the update from yesterday and one of the six things that I look at to determine whether or not we have a directional bias that's bullish or bearish. I still like though, even though this is bearish on the intraday, I still like a potential swing buy on the, on the daily for a longer term overnight trade. So there's that contrast. All right, but let's, let's ask the next level question. Once I see that the NASDAQ and the S&P are bullish, what would keep me from buying? And it's actually a little telltale tool that I use at the bottom of my screen. And it's these two colored rows moving along the bottom. So the arrows are coming from the V-score. So ignore those for now. Look at how this market pretty much stayed double red from the open. That tells you that the structure of the market is bearish. You add the red grab candles to the mix and then you realize that this is very likely going to be a market that's going to stay um, bearish and keep breaking support until we can at least have a, a good amount of time of yellow and then stable with no new lows. And that came, it, we couldn't get that. We, we saw some yellow markets, but then new lows occurred. We saw some yellow markets, and this is during the doldrums, but then new lows occurred. So, so no, that wasn't that particular criteria for the market slowing down to the downside never happened either, and the double red persisted. And the same thing happened in the, in the S&P. Now, once I realize that the broader index is still bearish, I will get curious about whether or not we have a relative outperformer. Is there a corner of the market? Is there a sector that was not double red? Well, one of my favorite sectors in this market has continued to be the XLF, right? And this is, by the way, how I day trade both indices and sectors and stocks in a really cohesive way. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 Central, simplertrading.com forward slash entry. We'll be discussing that tomorrow on the webinar. So let me show you a little bit more, a little sneak peek of what this is. So look at the structure down here. Ah, neutral, right? There's a little bit better a chance that one of these setups, when I get a V-score and a Darvis signal, so I get the signal stacked here, is going to help me build a long position via XLF. And there's uh, one setup right there. Okay, keep scanning uh, markets that have bullish, directional bias on their dailies. That takes me to the XLC. I'll do again, something very similar. Do I have a yellow market that I can look for a potential buy-in? Well, I had a yellow market and then it went red and I never got a stack signal. So nothing to do there. All right, what else can I look at? How about industrials? All right, let's go take a look at what we had in terms of the bell ringing. Oh, well, look at this. Isn't this refreshing, right? I look at pre-market green, and then the green went to yellow and it stayed yellow, but pre-market it was green and it stayed pretty stable. Okay, well, can I find a setup here? Well, unfortunately, this one did not give me the nice, nice stacked setup. If you're a little bit more aggressive in a yellow environment, especially when the preceding environment was green, you might find one of these a good area to buy some XLI calls. Maybe, right? But not as good as the previous. Okay, what about something like healthcare? Going back to the open, um, we had yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, so are we getting any setups in the, with the combination of my V-score and my Darvis signals? No, and even the follow through was, it was all right. It was all right. I know that there's a lot of V-score selling pressure in this area. Okay, but I know that I'm very clearly trading with bullish directional bias in the daily, so it's long or nothing. It's long only, which keeps me from getting short this market. But no super clean setup, just another couple of Darvis signals. Not bad. You know, if I'm long only and I'm willing to be a little aggressive, yeah, those Darvis signals aren't too bad around 124.20. Okay, where else can I look? Well, I've looked at industrials, communications. What about 
XL K. All right, so we go back. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Again, no V score. So again, and another thing to remember is I've got a yellow market here, but look at all the red grab candles. That's a little nerve wracking. But although I will say in fairness, Darvis move higher. Darvis, nothing. Darvis again, move higher. Not too bad, but not, not anything to write home about. So you see, I'm looking at the stack signals and then I start to scan the individual sectors looking for some sort of resilience. When the markets are weak and we're seeing risk aversion, you know, maybe staples are going to hold their own, right? Maybe you can see a state, but again, no signal. And I love the fact that my, my, my uh, indicator said, yeah, there's some aggressive, you know, Darvis only signals here. This, we're using a, uh, a tweak of the traditional Darvis to create these Darvis based signals, but no V score. So notice if I can get those stacked setups and, and I showed you that earlier, that's a really great way to, again, indices don't have great structure. We saw what the two rows of colors told us about the environment. We try to go find something neutral to dare I even look at anything bullish, right? Unbelievable. But um, again, remember the way in which we want to look at the directional bias on the daily, which would kind of make us not too keen on long positions in XLP. Watch yesterday's free video, then check out this video again, and then join me tomorrow. If this is starting to resonate, like, wait a minute, I think I can do this, all right. And this is only one of six things you look at to get the clarity rug. Yeah, it, this is only one of six things. Imagine when, when you have all six. <laughs> and so uh, check out our video tomorrow or check out our webinar tomorrow at simplertrading.com forward slash entry. And I'll talk more about these tools and this process and looking at the indices, saying no thanks and looking for relative outperformance and day trading some ETF options. And then, by the way, the next level is if I've got a relative outperformer, what stocks could be relatively outperforming within that? So you can see you can keep going deeper and deeper until you find a great setup. I'll see you in the next update. Hey, traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.